Thanks for watching On Call for All Kids. Today we're talking about abnormal head shapes. We'll be discussing the most common types of head shape abnormalities, what causes them and how it's diagnosed, and the best treatment options for your child. I am joined by Dr. Matthew Smith. He is Chief of Neurosurgery here at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. So great to have you here, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for the warm welcome today, as well as the past few weeks, because I just moved from St. Louis here to uh, St. Petersburg. I'm happy to be well, here. We are so glad to have you here at Johns Hopkins All Children's and to cover this very important topic. So what are some of the most common types of head shape abnormalities? So the most common type is flattening in the back of the head called positional plagiocephaly. So parents are instructed with their young infants to have them sleep on their backs to avoid the, the rare sudden infant death syndrome. And so infant skulls are very soft and pliable, allowing them to get out of the birth canal. So when they're born, they're somewhat soft. If they're laying on the back of their head, they can get flattening, which is from positional. That's the most common abnormality, and it develops after birth when kids are a few months of age. There's some other head shape abnormalities that are associated with abnormal growth of the skull, and we can help figure those out in clinic if we need to. And so how is this diagnosed? So usually plagiocephaly or benign flattening in the back of the head can be diagnosed just with a clinical examination. So either your pediatrician or one of our specialists at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in one of our craniofacial clinics or head shape clinics is equipped to make this diagnosis, usually just by examining the infant and looking at the head shape. Sometimes if we're concerned about the skull growth, we may add imaging studies like x-rays or a CAT scan. At that point, once that diagnosis is made, what are the treatment options? So we'll typically categorize the plagiocephaly into mild, moderate, or severe categories. If it's mild, we may not do anything except reassure the parents and pediatrician there's not much to do. If it's more severe flattening, then we'll talk about measures to keep the infant off the back of the head, like positioning on their side, lots of tummy time, propping the baby upright during the day as much as possible. And what we'll see over time is as the brain wants to grow out in all directions, it'll actually round out the skull over the next few months. And then in more severe cases, we may um, decide to add a special custom molding helmet. So these are lightweight plastic helmets with foam on the inside that are custom fit to fit the infant's head. And where there's a flat spot, there's a gap in the helmet. And so as the brain reshape that skull over time, and the helmet therapy usually is started when a child might be four or five, six months of age, and we would usually stop the helmet therapy around their first birthday. And can you kind of advise parents watching today as to when they should really go see a specialist if they have any concerns about the shape of their child's head? Well, first of all, it's important to remind parents and families that a flat spot on the head has no impact on brain growth or development. In, the, in these cases, it's really just a cosmetic issue. And the flattening's in the back of the head where it's not very noticeable. And these kids look perfectly fine and cute when you look at them from the front. But if they're concerned about the flattening, then I would encourage them just to bring it up to their pediatrician or contact one of us at our head shape clinics, and we'd be happy to evaluate the child. And in many cases, we don't need to do any imaging. Are there any other abnormal head shapes that you see? Yes. So as a neurosurgeon, I see a lot of head shape abnormalities that are more serious than just benign flattening. Fortunately, these are much more rare, but about one in 3,000 infants can have early closure of one of the growth plates of the skull, and this is called craniosynostosis. The most common form of craniosynostosis is a fusion of the suture, the growth plate at the top of the head that results in the baby's head shape going long front to back. And the kids do look a little different than other kids. They should be referred for a surgical evaluation, and then testing would be done and surgery might be offered. Again, the most common head shape abnormality is benign flattening and does not require any surgery. All right, Dr. Smith, thanks so much for joining us today, and welcome to Johns Hopkins All Children's. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you, Ashley. And thank you all for watching. Don't forget, you can also visit our website. It's hopkinsallchildrens.org slash newsroom. There you'll find a lot of other timely topics in pediatric healthcare and other great resources for your family. We'll see you next week.